Welcome back my fantastic artistic friends. Uh, what we've got on here is an 18 by 24 inch double prime pre-stretch canvas and the top half I've coated in a very thin layer of linseed oil and titanium white mixed. Down here is nice and dry, we want this dry down here. What you can't be doing was just putting a little bit of blue colour up here. This is a blue that I've made from uh, French Ultramarine, a bit of Prussian blue and some bright red and white and I've put it onto that slick linseed oil just up there and then all I'm doing then is taking a big dry brush and I'm just blending this colour together. We've got a nice super nice little little sky. So what we're going to do is going to paint Sycamore Gap, this iconic place that's uh, in the British countryside along Adrian's Wall. It's it lives in a nice big gap in the countryside. Now, a couple of days ago, some, some brainless morons decided it was a fun thing to do to cut down this iconic tree, this tree that's been there for 300 years and, and means so much to so many people. And I just can't get me head why anyone would want to do that. Even nature is not safe now. It, you know, it's just ridiculous. So we're going to put our version on canvas for us all to enjoy. So with that said, that sky is now coated, so just like that. We're going to put a couple of little clouds up here. So I'm going to bring you up to the canvas so you can see us painting some clouds. But before I do, please hit that like button and subscribe to the channel if you've not done so already. Let's get to the canvas. Okay, number six filbert brush. And all I'm going to do is take some pure titanium white and pick out a couple of little clouds. Now this tree will go round about here in the middle. So I don't want to go crazy on the the clouds but all i'm going to do is just pick out some now this this white paint won't remain truly white because of the blue that's already on the canvas so just going to put just a couple of little cloudy shapes just up here like so bury them and make them however you see fit like that and then once we've coated the uh, the canvas in enough white cloudy color and we can blend it and we can add some shadows to this as well Put a couple of shadows underneath these clouds so i've just added a bit of burnt umber to that sky color really and that's grayed it off somewhat and i'm just hitting the bottom of these clouds just with a little little something or a shadow just there like that and then soft brush and blend it all out like so. so maybe some down here as well on underneath these but these are far away so can't see those i'll get the soft brush out in a second just a little soft brush where is it that one will do nice little soft brush and then just tease and blend the base of these together really work it together the highlight and the shadow the sky all generally in place now i think we can start working on some of the gap so again so just burn on burn some of this sky color just to make a nice gray color i think there is a, a a bit of the wall that comes out there and i'm just following my loose loose guidelines just something like that and i think it goes behind the the hill there or it will do on our composition okay so just there like that and i don't want much of the the wall the wall is is really old a couple of thousand years old really adrian's wall roman wall to divide england and scotland which wasn't england and scotland then <laughs> but uh but it is now so just gonna lay some of this color in there and then we'll pick out some individual stones and we've also got a bit of stone work just down here again this is a a grey from ultramarine and burnt umber with a bit of that sky colour thrown in there, some stones there. And we've got some on this side as well that will come just out there like that. Okay, the hillside will go down there. So we'll just have it like that, maybe a couple more stones and bits of rubble anywhere where we need them but we'll cross that bridge when we come to it so for now just gonna lay some color in here before we can work on the, the tree itself so i've got the ruins of adrian's wall in place now so it's it's time to just put um 
some indications of where the leaves are going to be on the tree so pick up a filbert brush and we're going to have the top of the tree round about here though it, it may grow and it's got another from what i remember seeing a, a, a branch there like that i do like filbert brushes for this because you, you know when you touch on a filbert brush it gives like a a leafy effect um so, so yeah so that's going to come down there now this is just a green made of uh, yellow ochre a bit of sap green and a bit of blue just thrown in there and this is a big bushy one so it comes down there so the light's going to come from this side obviously it's like there okay that makes sense and uh, so so yeah so we'll just put some color in and i want to leave some of the sky showing through some of some of the leaves so just like that yeah leave some of the sky and we'll have the trunk coming up here as well obviously <laughs> in the center of the gap so if you can see what i'm doing i'm just building up different layers of color uh in this tree because i want it to give it the rounded a shape uh of what a tree actually looks like this this great sycamore tree that was stood there for 300 years what a what an idiot what an absolute idiot who, who chopped this beautiful thing down but yeah just work on color so obviously the light side and the dark side and all the colors in between so of course it's going to be a bit darker down here we, we can go a couple of shades darker as well if we need to and just build on that there as well take some of this dark color it's just a darker green really we'll, we'll put some in there it's like another branch going to come off there i'm not painting the branches in just yet though i will paint a few eventually that's going to be dark and then so that part will be a lighter green and this part will be a lighter green so this might be a bit darker so let's grab some of that put a bit of burnt umber into the green as well to, to darken it off a, a touch more like so again just just build on color work on shape and formation of the tree so with the paint all in the in the foliage of the of the sycamore tree all we can do then is just get a a rag preferably a lint free rag and just start tapping and then changing the rag over so we're not taking a lot of the color away and then just start tapping just to remove excess oil so we can put the next layer on there just like that yeah it's all coming off nicely just like that so with most of the foliage of the sycamore tree in place i'm going to start painting with a bit of brown now this is just burnt umber and raw sienna the the trunk and i'm just gonna put this color in because we'll need to highlight it and shadow it so we'll just get some some loose browns in there okay i know sycamore trees are usually more ready brown than, than, than let's say an oak tree so, so that will come down there like that and i think it splits off so grab a bit more of that color of course dry down here so we can put his hands down so and we may change where well, we will have to change to a liner brush to to get a lot of this in place so yeah like that like so bit up there as well because we'll put a load of we'll put a load of little twigs and stuff that we may be able to see in there maybe i'm going to widen that one widen it there like so just play around just just grow some grow some branches and, and play around a little bit of an air falling out of the brush there like that. and this is where the tree will start to come alive when we start to put all sorts of branches and twigs and things like that the, the tree will jump out at you come at you know start and come out at you there there like that that looks a lot better now just do that little one bit 
So with a tree trunk and all the branches all in place, what you can do now is on a, a script liner brush, this number three liner brush, I just take pure lumps of 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 oil paint. This is a, a, a yellowy green colour and just just paint individual little little leaves that are, are right out here. And we can do the same for the dark as well. Just just, just very delicately work on individual little little leaves just, just picking them out where the sun's hitting the uh some of the leaves out here the branches out here you need a lot of paint a lot of paint a big lump of paint to make it stick like that i've got the word 36 uh because as between recording parts for the for the show, I'm listening to a radio program, and that radio program we're talking about the sycamore tree, and the tree itself used to be obviously before some thug cut it down, thirty six meters tall and three hundred years old, and it sits nicely in the gap of the wall in in Northumbria, uh, the very north of England. Um, yeah. So anyway, so what we're gonna do? Uh, Tree's almost complete now that we may come back and tinker with it if we, if we need to. We're going to paint the grasses either side of this uh, this tree and some more rubble and stonework down here. So uh, whatever paint we've got on this brush, this is just yellows and greens, just going to get loads of different colours. So lots and lots of paint, different yellows, different greens, different even bits of black, browns, blues. You know, blue's good shadow colour for green, I think. So... Bit of, bit, bit of brown in there, a little bit of dirt. So just really lots of paint. Get, get a bit of sap green as well thrown in there as well. Cover the whole thing in thick paint and then we can mush it together and make lovely grass. Happy days. Let's get some ochre. Yellow ochre. There's a bit of like that. It was a different colour then. So they all got to be different colours. Is that too dark? No. A tiny bit of black. Where's your black? There. Oh, that's blue. Use nice black, yeah. Nice blue. You can use blue though. Blue's a good shadow colour. Where's your black? Next to the blue. Oh, I am. I'm trying to pass you the brush. Get out of here. I'm trying, but you're in my way. So there we go. So look at all that colour on there. That is a lot of colour, a lot of thick paint, and that's exactly what we're after. Okay, so just let's set the palette down and grab an oldish fan brush. Uh, let's have a look at this one. This one will do. Okay, and a rag. Now all I'm going to do is take this fan brush and I'm just going to push up. Okay, just push up ever so gently here. And then bigger strokes as I get there, just push up and merge all these colours together to create a great grassy effect with lots of variants of colour and texture and feeling basically. Now when you take the dark colour, wipe the brush, you don't want to take, you don't want the blacks really to overrule the painting, but you don't want it laying flat, you know, you don't want the, the grass work to look flat, so you may need to add a bit more colour if that's the case. Grab a bit of colour, just put it in, and then just just push up, push up. Okay, once we've done all this, maybe wipe off the brush. Once we've done this, then we're just going to paint a few stones, and we're near completion. Happy days. Look at that. It's coming alive already. Coming alive already. A few blades of grass right down in the foreground and I think we've got a, a finished painting, a, a sad one in a way because we're not going to get to see this view in its entirety in, in, in nature ever again and I hope the bozos that chop the tree down get what's coming to them. If you've enjoyed the picture though, give me a big old thumbs up. Don't forget we've got channel memberships on the, uh, on the channel as well. Subscribe if you've not done so already and leave me a comment. Until next time, you guys take care of yourself. Stay safe. Happy days.